Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and another How I Paint video. Uh, I've not done, a, not done one of these in a long time so I thought, ah, I thought I would do a new one. Um, this one is all about how I go about painting my 15mm uh, US Airborne figures. Um, I did make, I made a video uh, last week I put up on the channel, I'll put a link to that in the description below, um, where I'd, I'd painted a, a section and a, a HQ 15mm um, US Airborne. So I thought I'd make a video just to outline exactly how I go about painting these. Um, so this will be the, I think it's the first video I've done where I've actually painted, painted figures live or semi-live on camera. So what I'm going to do is uh, just go away, rearrange the desk, rearrange the camera, and I'll be back presently to start, to start the painting video. So I shall see you in a little bit. Okay, so I'm actually recording the audio uh, after I'd made the video. The uh, the audio was slightly broken. So I'm going to try and do a bit of a narration over the top of the broken audio. So this this should be interesting. So what you, have, what you see on the screen now, <coughs> excuse me, is the miniature I'm going to be painting. And this has been um, base or primed in brown paint and then given a coat of uh, Vallejo khaki grey. Um, there's a bit of a bit of debate about what uniform you should use or what colour uniform you should use for US Airborne at this stage of the war. But I found that uh, Vallejo Khaki Grey uh, works really quite well. Uh, once it's been hit with the Agrax Earthshade Wash um, and the highlights have been applied, it works really, really well. So that's the, that's the colour I always go for. So the first stage of the process uh, I'm going to do is paint the skin. Now with with all things that I paint, I paint from sort of the inside out, and this means um, skin first. Now I'd normally use Cadian flesh tone uh, when painting on my 28 millimeter figures, uh, but with 15 at 15 millimeter scale, I really want them want the figures to pop more, so I tend to use uh, brighter colours um, across all of the um, all of the miniature. So the skin for these guys, <coughs> excuse me, is going to be basic skin tone, but with a drop of uh, Vallejo light rust. This gives the skin a more sort of, sort of more a more of a ruddier hue. Um, and when when the uh, when the Agrax shade wash has been applied to it, um, you can really see the difference. Um, it's 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 lighter than than the skin I use at twenty eight millimeters, um, but uh, it works really well. So when I when I when I use this, uh, you only have to have to apply a really really small amount of the of the light rust. Um, otherwise, the skin goes really really too too dark for the effect that I want. Uh, now, luckily on these figures, the only areas of flesh uh, are the faces because I've got a real aversion to painting flesh. Uh, it's, it's not something that I really like doing. Um, so on these guys, it's just the face. Uh, on their hands, they're wearing uh, sort of tan colored gloves, which I'll get to later on in the process. Um, so on, on this particular figure, or on all the figures that are in this section, um, the only skin that's applied is to the face. And again, this is applied um, with watered down paints, obviously painting a bit of painting 101 for you there. A um, couple of thin coats. Um, and again, with, when painting at this scale, you don't need to be um, like a 100% accurate. Um, when, when we apply the wash later on in the process, it's really gonna cover up all mistakes and you can really let the, um, the, the, the wash do all the work for you. <clears throat> that's one thing you'll often hear me say when I'm using Agrax Earthshade is you can, the wash will do an awful lot for you. So what I'm doing here is just applying the, um, the last couple of layers of, of paint on the face. Um, again, it's a, it's basic, basic flesh tone um, with a drop of light rust just to give it a more darker, ruddier hue. Uh, that's applied, applied to the face on the model. And that is all the flesh done. As you can see, I'm just applying the last parts of it there. So with the flesh finished, uh, the next part uh, to, to, to paint on the model is going to be the webbing, the pouches, the rucksack, etc. 
Um, now, uh, the, the paint that I use for this, um, one that I, I, I think goes really, really well with the, um, with the uh, khaki grey uniform, uh, is going to be uh, Vallejo um, German Camo Beige. As we can see here, Vallejo Camo Beige. There we go, there it is. Um, this is just applied um, on its own, so there's no, no additional paints added to it. Again, we just water the, water the paint down, thin it down a bit. Uh, and what we're looking for on this particular model is the, um, the rucksack, the entrenching tool, the pouches. Um, He's got a knife uh, strapped to his right leg, I believe it's a knife, and also straps um, to, to make sure his equipment is bound to him. So all I'm going to be doing now is applying that German camo beige to the um, the rest of uh, the rest of the model. Again, painting at this scale is is you don't have to be like I say a million percent accurate. Uh, with this, I'm just I'm just going on where where it looks like the the, the equipment is. Uh, you make a couple of mistakes. It's, it's, there's going to be mistakes at <laughs> this scale. Um, I know when I paint, I, I batch paint in ten to twelve. Um, I make mistakes. Um, I, I, I paint pretty fast anyway, but at this scale, I can I can really fly through. Um, so there are going to be errors, but what I don't do, I don't let it get to me. There's no point in in touching up every mistake or every error at this stage. Um, it's just going to slow down the process, and it's going to it's going to become very boring very very quickly. So all you need to do is really just go for the main parts. And like I mentioned, uh, with the with the when painting the flesh, all you need to do is really just let the um, let the the wash, so the Agrax head wash, do all the work for you. That wash is going to settle into all the recesses, all all the nooks, all the crannies, uh, and any mistakes that um, that you've made, uh, nine times out of ten, they're going to be hid um, by the um, Agrax head wash. And even then, uh, if there are any, um, when we apply the highlights to this figure. That's when you can touch up any any smaller errors that you've um, that you, you may have made. But as you can see on the screen now, what I'm doing is just going in and just very very gently applying that um, German camo beige to the the rucksack, um, any pouches, the entrenching tool, webbing, um, the knife, and the straps. And again, not being 100% um, you know accurate here, but that's. That's the best way to go about it. With 15 millimeter, these, these bent figures of this size really benefit from the three foot, the three, the three feet rule, which is if it looks okay from three feet, you've done a good job. Uh, now I normally apply this to my 28 mil painting, but with with painting at 15 mil, yeah, even more so. Um, if you get if you're getting far too, if you're getting close enough, you can see all the uh, <laughs> all the errors and the mistakes. You're, you're far too close. Um, that that's, I think it it just demands an entire different sort of mindset and approach when you when you're painting 15 millimeter. You're not going for the individual masterpiece. You're going for the the overall look of the unit or the section uh, or the team. I'm really relying on some. What I rely on is a, a very limited palette, basic block painting, and then adding that that um, Agrax Earth Shade wash. And then on top of that, we're going to be doing some really, really sort of really basic highlights. Now, the, when, when the wash is on there, um, it does its job and you can really, really see where those highlights have to be added. So with the webbing, um, the next part um, we need to paint is going to be the rifle and the boots. Um, now, again, this differs slightly from how I would normally paint, paint 28 millimeter figures. Now, I'd usually you know, normally use a darker brown at this stage for the for, for uh, the rifles and the boots. What I use at this scale is this. It's a Vallejo beige brown. Um, it's sort of right in the middle of between a dark brown and a light brown. Uh, but again, works really well with that wash. And from this scale, it's going to pop more than if I'd use something like I don't know Vallejo um, German black brown, for example, which is what I use on my 28 mil figures. Um, if I was to use that at this day, at, at this at this scale, I don't think it would work quite as well. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is using um, Vallejo German, uh, sorry Vallejo beige brown, and I'm just going to be applying that to the um, the rifle and the boots. Um, 
again this is a paint that works really well with that well i know i keep banging on about it it's going to work really well with that wash that i'm going to apply at the end of the, the block painting so as you can see here what i'm doing is just applying this to the the, the entire rifle um so the rifle itself uh, any metallic parts are covered at this stage as well and also the strap everything's getting the same brown color um what i don't do at this stage is add any metallics of any of any sort so there'll be no um no barrel paint at this stage no, none of the firing mechanism um the well, when the wash is added that will already now the color up and it'll make the rifle look rusty which is one thing we don't want so what i tend to do is any metallics like that are left to the once the, all the highlights have, have been added to this figure, uh, what I will then do is go in and add the metallics at that stage. Um, but all I'm doing now is just applying this German, I keep saying that German, it's not, it's, it's just normal Vallejo beige brown. Just applying this to the uh, all of the rifle. And what I'll also do is, is go in and paint the boots um, with the same color. Um, and again, as with uh, previous stages the paint is watered down qu um, quite a lot this gives a real even flow um, especially when you're working it with with figures at this scale um, a good flow of the paint is it's really really needed otherwise what's going to happen is you're just going to get gunged up figures and you, you're not going to see i know these figures um they're not as detailed as 28 millimeter figures but if you if you've applied uh, really thick unwatered paint onto these figures all you're going to do is clog up the detail clog up the miniature and you're not really going to have uh, much of a miniature to, to um to look at so this is the like i said what we can see here i'm just painting the um the beige brown onto the boots uh, what i tend to do as well is use a limited palette when i'm painting so with especially 15 millimeters so any browns will be used across all, all browns on the figure so in this case it's the beige brown being used on boot the boots and the rifle and there we have it. So that's all the browns applied. It's looking rather fetching, if I may say so myself. And what you can see is the figure actually coming to life now from that that really basic um, khaki grey um, uniform colour. The, 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 the figure is actually starting to come to life. Um, so the next stage will be to paint the gloves. Um, these are tan when I, I've looked at them in real life. Uh, so to represent this on a figure this size, I'm going to be using uh, Vallejo Green Ochre. Um, as you can see here, Green Ochre, a nice sort of browny yellowy um, paint. So I will use this, again, water down, apply this to the figure's hands. Uh, the majority of the figures in this set, even though it's quite old, and um, we can still get any more, uh, are wearing gloves. And when I've, when I've checked a lot of the research, yeah, the, these, these sort of tan, light brown gloves are being used this is a godsend for me because like i mentioned earlier in the video i'm not the i'm not, not the biggest fan of painting <laughs> painting flesh i seem to have lost the skill or my mojo for it so uh, the least the, the least skin i can paint the better for for my uh, my sanity actually so what i'm doing now is just using um the green ochre uh, i'm just applying this to, to both hands um, one thing I should mention is the brush I'm using here. So I've only used I, I only use two brushes when I'm painting, especially this at this at this scale. Um, so the majority of the work is being done with a, a Winsor and Newton Series Seven Triple Zero uh, paintbrush. Um, these are my standard go-to for uh, for most painting. But with um, with 15 millimeter, um, this size brush really works really quite well. Um, it's big enough for a good a good coverage of paint, but it's also um, good enough that you can get into the real uh, fine detail. Um, so as you can see there, that's the um, the gloves being painted. So the left the left hand is is just a, the, the fingers are just a slight line uh, where it's gripping the um, the underside of the rifle, um, the main body of the rifle, and then just on the other side, just painting the um, the the rest of the glove on that side. Again with the green ochre. Um, being used, it's going to work really well with that uh, with the Agrax Earth Shade wash that I'm going to use later on once all the block painting's done. So as you can see there, very very quickly, the um, the gloves have been painted, and again the figure is looking a bit more alive than it was when we started. So what I'm doing is just you can see, um, just touching up the gloves again, making sure there's a nice even coverage uh, on those uh, on those gloves. There we go. Again, it makes. 
if you if you're like me you don't like painting flesh painting painting hands uh, with gloves <laughs> green ochre is really really the way to go um i think some of the miniatures i've got i've got i've got bare hands um i'm about to go in i think i painted some of the, some of the ones that i painted last week and uh, they they had bare hands um but i think if you painted gloves in flesh it's going to look a bit odd okay so on to the last part now now this is this is painting the um the helmet uh, now i've used bronze green um to paint the helmet on the figure um it took me quite a while to decide what green to use now as a a, a person that predominantly paints <laughs> paints german figures i have a lot of green paint um, knocking around the place but what i found is that when i up there for the bronze green it works really well it's a good contrast against the rest of the uniform uh, as you can see um and it, it all we're going to do is apply that um the agrax wash later on but also do a bit of dry brushing um in the the highlight stage um just to bring out the kind of the camouflage sort of scrim net type on them um what i would say is when i'm painting the helmet um at this stage i am a little bit more careful than i was with the rest of the process as is, this is a starker more darker color than the the, the browns and the um the carcass that i've applied so far uh, and it's going near the flesh and also near the uniform i do tend to be a bit more careful um, to make sure the green is applied um, more accurately and with a, with a bit more uh, a bit more skill and uh, <laughs> um, endeavor than I did with the the rest of the um, the rest of the miniature. But as you can see, even now that that green's working really well with the rest of the figure. Uh, again, just, just apply that, that carefully. Two or three even coats with the paint watered down, um, and that, that will allow it to flow evenly over the uh, over the helmet and as you can see it's all very neat at this stage it's just the final final small coat to add to the um to the helmet i think you probably get away with any kind of dark green on that helmet um russian uniform green um, even even german field gray um, may work because once you've added the brown and dry brushed it it's it's just going to produce a sort of a, it's a, di a different green and i think there's going to be there's going to be different colour helmets anyway, um, you know, with different different types of camouflage, with weathering, etc. So I think, yeah, it's really, really, you're free to use whatever green you want at this stage. The what I find is a Vallejo bronze green uh, is really, really the way to go. Um, now I think at this stage, from, from my memory, I think there was a dog barking outside, and I was just apologising <laughs> if you could hear the dog. Uh, it's currently the summer, well, getting towards the summer, it's quite hot. I live near a park. And it's been it's been full of dogs recently. Ah, here we go. So this is this is the Agrax Earthshade. This is the liquid talent. So what I'm going to do now is apply this to um, all of the miniature using a an old size two brush, which has seen better days. Now what I don't do is I don't splash this all over it. Um, what I tend to do is to have a more controlled application of the Agrax Earthshade wash. Um, too much it will pool badly and you'll you'll lose the effect that we're trying to go for here which is to create um the the the, the shadows and the recesses um if we were to just slop it all over the miniature um like i normally do at 28 millimeter uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna work it's not gonna have that desired effect so what you'll see as i sort of i splodge it on yes that's the word i use splodge as i, as I splodge it on you can see the the the, the wash settling into the uh into the recesses to the face uh, between the equipment and the uniform and this is just this is doing all the work for you um as you can see i pulled a bit too much there but just use the brush to as they splodge it around the miniature you don't need an awful lot of it that, that's a good thing uh, painting it with we're using the wash at 15 millimeter you can just sort of dab it on like that and you've got more you've got more control as you can see, it, although it's still wet, it's uh, it's gone into all the recesses. So what we're going to do now is, once the Agrax Earthshade has been applied, we're going to leave that to dry. Um, shouldn't take too long, um, given the, the small amount of, uh, of Agrax Earthshade that I've actually used. So once the Agrax Earthshade has dried, I'm not sure what happened there. Anyway, we'll be back. Um, once that's done, 
and we'll apply the highlights. Okay, so welcome back. Um, again, I'm narrating over the video um, due to the broken audio. But here we have the effect of the Agrax Earthshade. Now it's dry and just look at that. How good does that look? This is the beauty of Agrax Earthshade. They don't call it liquid talent for nothing, you know. Just look at that. All those shadows, the, the, the creases all work really well. So what we're going to do now is apply the highlights. Now what I've done is because the, um, the paints were watered down uh, sufficiently, they were all still in my palette so I didn't have to mix any more paints. So first off, we're going to do the, the highlights on the, um, on the flesh. Now, it's 15 millimeter. We're, we're not going for, for multiple layers of, uh, of, of highlights on the face here. It literally is just a, it literally is just a um, applying the the mix that uh, I made earlier, and this just gets applied to the nose, uh, the cheekbones, and the chin. Just three lines. You probably can't even see it, but it is there. Um, I'm, I'm not doing any more work than that on, on highlights on the face at this stage, to, at this scale, to be completely honest. I have better things to do in my time. Anyway, the next um, stage is to uh, apply uh, highlights to the rest of the, the uniform. This is going to be the biggest part of the uh, of the figure that gets them and gets the most the most highlights. And all I'm going to use with this again is just Vallejo Khaki Grey. I don't need to add any any sort of um, lighter paint to give it a, 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 a lighter or starker look. Um, where the Agrax Earthshade has settled, that's created those recesses, those shadows. So all I'm going to do is just basically water down the Vallejo Khaki Grey and apply this um, to the very upper parts of the figure. So you can clearly see where the, where the highlights need to go. It's on the, the upper extreme folds and creases of the uniform. Um, that's what Agrax Earthshade does, or any, any wash of that nature. Where it settles in between those um, those creases, all you need to do then is hit the upper part um, with the very with, with the highlight, um, and it sort of guides you. Now, what I found is is applying highlights at this stage really sets off the miniature. Um, I don't apply too many, but the ones that I do are quite bright, quite stark, um, and it really defines um, the the edges of the uniform, the the upper parts of the uniform, edges of weapons, etc. Um, but with but as you can see here, look where it's going on. You can see how that's popping already, um, and that, that literally is just applying the um, the khaki grey over the Agrax uh, Earthshade wash where it is dried. Um, again, uh, over, going over the top with the highlights of the stage, you're going to lose that effect. Um, so it literally is just a case of hitting the extreme areas. Um, so the, the just the, the upper parts of the uniform, the creases, the folds, etc. Um, and then leaving it at that. If you over egg the pudding, so to speak, um, you're gonna you're gonna lose all the effect that we that we that we want, which is having that contrast between the dark shadow, the dark recesses, and the kind of the sharp, extreme highlights on the rest of the uniform. As you can see, that's the the highlights all done there, and it really is making that figure pop. Again, not not too many added, just the extreme parts. But what you have is um, all the highlights done. Um, all I'm going to do now is apply highlights to the um, the webbing and the pouches. Again, this is just using um, the uh, Vallejo German um, beige. Uh, don't, again, don't need to lighten it. Um, that, I think that will make the highlights far, far too bright for the effect that we're trying to achieve. But what it does, where the wash is set it over the top of the, of the, um, the beige, just going back in with the original color um, again, just just on the upper of the extreme parts, uh, really does it, it. It just works. It's really quickly. So when I batch paint these, the highlight stage can be completed very very quickly. So as you can see, highlights apply to all of the um, the equipment and the webbing, and the figure is definitely starting to pop. So the, the next stage now is to apply the beige brown to the the rifle and also the boots uh, i think i'll go a bit over the top bit yeah oh bit of a splodge there yeah it could have been a bit a bit more controlled there so that's uh, my bad but it was rescued um and again you don't need to, to really go over the top here it's just the the extreme parts of of the rifle so we're talking the stock uh, and the butt uh, i think the stock is the same as the butt i'm rambling uh, and here we go it's the um 
no, just the boots and just the, the upper part and also the uh, the sling on the rifle. So that, how quick was that? What, five minutes? That was just applying the highlights to the main parts of the, um, of the uniform. So what's up next is going to be um, the helmet. So what I do with the helmet is use the same the same green that I used before, so it's the Vallejo bronze green, um, but I want to lighten it. I want to do is dry brush very, very gently across the, uh, the helmet with this lighter green, um, just to represent the, the camouflage. Now I add a very small drop of Vallejo light yellow to uh, so that bronze green mix. Um, and this produces um, a, a lighter green. Um, it's, a, it's, just, it's a lot lighter than the green anyway, um, but even though it's been washed, it, the, the helmet is darker. So all we're gonna do is just use that those two paints, mix them together, um, and do a very, very, very light dry brush um, across the top of the helmet. Again, if you, this, Get, if you get this wrong, it, it's not gonna. It's not gonna look good. It's gonna be too bright to start. You can go back in, work at the scale. Can you, you can easily fix mistakes, like I, like I mentioned earlier. But all you want to do is just hit very, very gently and very lightly the top of the helmet, just to pick out that kind of the scrim net, uh, the scrim detail on there. So the bits of material um, and camouflage added to the helmet, that's, and that's that done. So as you can see, very, very, very quick, but makes the makes it the, the, the it really pop against the rest of the miniature looking really rather good if i may so so may say so myself um if you've got this far this may be the most unorthodox how i paint video that i've ever made it just keeps him fitting with the rest of the channel and my grasp on technology okay so i'm rambling again right next up is uh, applying the metallic parts to the rifle now what i use is vallejo natural steel um it's a, a sharper more starker metallic paint now what I would normally use, here we go, natural steel, what I would normally use is Vallejo gunmetal grey, but at this stage, uh, th sorry, this scale, it, it, it doesn't have the effect that I want. Um, I want, I want the, the metallics to pop, um, so you can see that they are metallics. And all I'm gonna do is add the natural steel, this is gonna be a tan um, applied to the barrel, and also the firing mechanism on the top of the rifle. Uh, what I don't do, is I don't apply a wash. Normally with metallics, I would apply uh, null oil or some other similar sort of black wash just to bring those metallics down because a 28, uh, 28 millimeter painting that on a rifle, wow, I would not be doing that. Um, it would stand out too much. It would be start far, far too stark. It would look really unrealistic. However, these guys are 15 millimeters tall. So what I want to do is kind of accentuate the metallics on there rather than sort of dull them down. So I go for the natural steel and just um, don't apply any wash. And this is just applied to the, um, the barrel and the firing mechanism. And that is the last part on, uh, um, on the figure. So the actual detailing work, as you can see, took about, about eight and a half minutes um, to complete. And that, that was with me sort of talking as well. As you can see, that is the finished figure. Of a 15 millimeter, I think that's really, <laughs> that's really rather good. I don't blow my own trumpet, um, but yeah, that that's that's finished. So imagine another 11 or 12 of those for the section um, painted in, in one go. You're going to fly through these miniatures like like. No, in no time at all. What I would do normally is, is add the 82nd Airborne patch to the left arm, but I'm, I'm not going to show you how to do that because you might not want to paint them as 82nd Airborne. So it'd just be a waste of time. A waste of time at me showing you that. But that is the finished figure. So I hope you find the video interesting. Um, if you've got any comments or questions, leave them down below in the uh, description. In the the comments and I'll certainly respond to all comments and questions. Uh, there's also a link in there to our new Facebook group so please feel free to wumble across and join the Facebook group um, post what you're, what you're painting and what you're playing. Um, but as always, I uh, hope you find the, the video interesting. Thanks for watching. Um, may your dice roll well and I'll catch you all in the next video. So bye bye for now.